Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So as usual today, let's go over the market, see what happened. We are in quite the market, ladies and gentlemen, my goodness, this is just an unbelievable, <laughs> this market is just ridiculous. Anyway, so Tesla ending up the day actually up half a percent, which is actually pretty damn good considering how the QQ and the SPY were down one and a half percent, 1.3 to one and a half percent roughly, which is like a decent drop. The fact that Tesla even held on, like the fact that Tesla ran up the way it has been, and even after the SPY and the QQQ sell off like this, and it's still holding on. I mean, to be fair, Tesla did run up like substantially higher, but like the fact that it's still kind of holding on in all honesty, relative to the indices is, is insane. Like <laughs> that's insane. So, okay, something that people might not uh, be fully aware of or, you know, understand or whatever. Wait, why does it say here that it ended at, oh, here we go. Okay, 99. Is that Tesla is extremely, the options market on Tesla is very, very, very like high or like aggressive. Essentially, what that means is that the stock moves a lot in the short ish term of uh, it, there's, there's a lot of traders, a lot of traders in Tesla. And there's a lot of people that trade options, a lot of option activity. It's like by far the highest in the market, like not just like the highest. It's like I'm pretty sure it's like by far uh, the highest. Which is why the stock can, uh, can just really move so like violently sometimes, whether it's up or down. In this case, it's moving violently up, like insanely violently up. But it can also do the same thing going down, as we all you know have seen several times as well, right? It can go up and down equally as fast, which is pretty rare for a stock. Usually, most stocks usually fall down faster than they climb up. Tesla can do both at the same speed, honestly, um, which is interesting, of course. And you know, it makes it very volatile, kind of hard to hold for people that don't you know have enough conviction because it just moves so aggressively all the time, up or down. But nonetheless, that's kind of why you see Tesla sometimes move like this, because uh, once the options market sometimes it just really ramps up and just kind of gets momentum going one way or the other, it tends to snowball pretty fast and pretty hard and pretty aggressively. In this case, of course, uh, upwards. But that's just kind of like a you know quick little description, I guess, if you will. Now, taking a look at the close, before I talk about Tesla, I actually want to look at the indices very quickly here. So the indices is actually fairly bearish close. I'm not going to lie. The indices is not looking amazing. Like it does look like they want to pull back. Now, the question is just... Like we all knew a pullback was coming. That wasn't the question. The question is, what? How far did we pull back? Like that's the main question. I personally want to see a pullback to this red line. Like on the spy, for instance, I want to see a pullback to the red line or like the breakout level. To be fair though, that's a decent. Eh, it's not that big of a pullback. It would be probably a, a, maybe another like three to four percent, which isn't that crazy considering. I mean, nowadays it isn't that crazy uh, for the indices. I mean, three percent for the indices nowadays happens in like two days, which is insane. But you know, it's true. So I kind of want to see something like that. You know, I want to see like the breakouts because like the indices have broken out, right? So you kind of want to almost like see a breakout kind of retest, if you will. Same concept on the QQQ. Like I kind of want to see it drop down. Okay, this is a bit more of an aggressive breakout. I mean, it could be like a little bit less than that, but like QQQ probably like 5% or like maybe something like that. Essentially, you want to see a retest of the breakout kind of maybe halfway-ish of this run-up at least, I would say. And, you know, kind of confirm it that, you know, we're in an uptrend and that'll be nice. That's what I want to see personally. It's not going to go straight down. I mean, it might. But the point is, is that I kind of want to see that eventually. Now, as, again, I have people that I follow that showed you yesterday that think that this is still a bear market. How, you know, this this is just like a correction, essentially, or corrective move upwards, essentially, um, because it was just oversold. And that we're potentially heading for new lows. I don't know. Just thought I'd bring that up. You know, again, take it as you will. I don't personally think we are. But again, you know, I also didn't think we'd move up this fast either. But he did. So... Clearly, he knows something I don't. Um, so keep that in mind. Like, you know, there, he he, the, he projected this move up all the way from down here. Not this high, of course. He thought it'll go to like, you know, somewhere around here. But, you know, it's not far from it. And this is from down here. And now he thinks from here, we're going to go probably like down here. I don't know. I don't think so. If we do, I'll buy more. If we don't, then we don't. Right. But anyways, so that's kind of how the indices look like. Not the most bullish close on the indices you can see, right? So this is going to be uh, an inside close uh, of a candle compared to the previous day. Of course, you can see here, right? So we kind of kept within this range and we closed within it. But it's also a very bearish candle where it's a very long wick at the top and it's a red candle as well. This is a very bearish candle. This is like the opposite of a hammer candle, essentially. Hammer candle, of course, being very bullish where it's a green candle and it's like, you know, the main candle is up here at the long wick at the bottom. This is, of course, literally flipped, obviously bearish. So the, the QQQ is not looking very good right here. So I'm expecting a pullback. Tesla... It's like, I want to say Tesla looks bearish. I do. But like this candle is very similar to this candle. Very, very similar. Right. 
the, the wick is longer and it's definitely a more of a drawback in my opinion. And of course, the fact that we ran even higher and then this happened is technically an even further signal that, you know, the buying pressure can be exhausted. But in all honesty, I thought the exact same thing here and look what the hell we had the next day. So at this point with Tesla, sometimes you just don't know. The thing is, is when it's running up like this and it's having like a short squeeze and or this like insane options play right now that's happening, where there's just an insane amount of options, you know, being played and bought, especially calls. It's hard to predict where it'll go. It really is. For all we know, like, I mean, for this week, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we break over a thousand again and maybe get up to like another like 10, 20 or something like that. Like it wouldn't surprise me at all. Just strictly off of the options markets. Um, but I think after this week is when it'll get more interesting to see how we're really going to start moving. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. In theory, just like off of straight technicals, in theory, we should be looking for a pullback starting tomorrow. This is a candle that in theory is fairly bearish, similar to this one. We should have had a pullback after this candle, in my opinion. But again, sometimes Tesla is like an index in itself. It really just makes its own rules and it just, it doesn't follow, you know, technicals. If, again, if the options market is like substantially heating up and or short squeeze, you know, you just kind of throw all technicals and whatnots and TA out the window. And I think this right here, this move right here was a perfect example of that. This was a perfect rejection of an area that had high resistance, perfect kind of mini bearish candle, which should have signaled a fall, a drawback, blah, blah, blah. It did it. And instead I had an insanely strong day. Again, same thing here, this candle, similar to this candle, in theory, this should signal the fact that, you know, we are running out of steam on the upside. We should be looking for a drawback. But with Tesla, you just don't know sometimes. You don't know. So if I had to take a guess, I, th I do think we're ready for a pullback. But at this rate, it's just, man, who, who the hell knows? Regardless, the point is, is that eventually we will get a pullback, right? Whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next week, we are getting a pullback. There's absolutely zero question about that. It is going to happen as much of a bull or not bull you are, uh, you know, that you can be on Tesla. It's going to happen. That's just how it works. That's just how the market works. Now, I personally want to see a pullback in like a bullish sense. So either the teal line or the red line. The teal line will be, of course, a pullback. From here, it would be roughly a pullback of 11%. I mean, that's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's a big pullback. But I mean, when you ran up this far, I mean, it's kind of to be expected. But again, I would want to see a retest because we broke above this teal line. I want to see a retest of this teal line, which again, would put us around 880 or so which will be about an 11% drop to 12% drop from the current close. Or I would want to retest intraday, maybe like on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday or something like that of the red line, which would in that case be somewhere around the mid 800s, which would be an even further pullback. That would be essentially an almost 15% pullback from the current highs, which again, at the, in the current market, really doesn't seem like it's impossible to happen. And then I want to see a bounce off of one of the two, right? The reason I say in the middle of the week, I want to see a, a pullback to this teal, uh, to the red line is because I don't want an actual weekly close below the teal line, again, ideally for the bulls, which is why if you kind of pull back, let's say on a Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even a Thursday, but then like the next day or so, you kind of pull back up over the teal line and get a weekly close over the teal line. You know, it's like, whatever, it's not a big deal. But you want to kind of try to maintain that close above the teal line, ideally on the weekly, uh, as much as possible right now, in my opinion. So that's essentially what I want to see. That's essentially what I'm expecting. The issue is it's hard to predict when that's going to happen. It will happen. Like I'm very confident, not financial advice, but again, I'm like 99% confident. We will get a pullback. It's just, you know, <laughs> you can't just go up just as much. You can't go down only as well. It's just a matter of when, not if, in my opinion. But again, first target is going to be a pullback down to this teal line is what I want to see. And the quote unquote worst case for the bulls is this red line to confirm the bounce out of this, uh, you know, red line, essentially similar to how we had it over here, except this time we failed this time. Of course, I wanted to succeed, but who knows? Technically could fail again. You never really know for sure. The bear is what they want to see. If you're a bear, if you want to see the stock plummet, you pretty much want to see an, a failed retest of the teal and the red line, and especially the purple line. If these fail just as much as the way we blasted through them and it just blasts right down through them again, that's what the bears want to see. Essentially fail, fail, fail. They want to see the moving averages fail, fail, fail. All right, we have a 50 moving average here at uh, pretty much 900. And then we have the 200, which is the main one, in my opinion, sitting right at the 856 level. So the 200 moving average is actually going to coincide pretty well with the red line and the T line, kind of in that general range of where I personally want to see a pullback and a retest. Um, so that's actually going to work out quite perfectly because by the time we actually get there, the 200 moving average will slowly start moving upwards. And it'll probably be like in this general area sometime next week, probably honestly, like early next week. I wouldn't be surprised to see it back in the you know mid to high ish 800s where i personally will be buying um and that's my target so that's essentially what i'm seeing guys 
we'll see what happens of course you never know with tesla it literally it it literally just has its own rules its own agenda hard to predict when it's doing something like this parabolic but sometimes you know you just got to be ready for that move and sometimes you got to be ready for what's to come in this case of course a very healthy keep in mind healthy pullback but all of that being said and done thanks for watching guys let me know what you think down below and i'll see you for the next video